On the broadcast tonight, North Korea fires 25 short-range rockets from its east coast into open water. Seoul and Washington urge Pyongyang to halt any actions that could stir military tensions. Korea may have narrowly missed a second doctor strike with a tentative agreement struck between the government and the Korean Medical Association over the weekend. And an overwhelming majority of Crimeans vote to secede from Ukraine and join Russia. The U.S. and the EU call the referendum illegal. This is Early Edition at 6. in flight. Korean Air. It is 5 a.m. in Washington, 11 in Crimea, and 6 on a Monday evening here in Seoul. Welcome to Early Edition at 6. I'm Moon Gun Young. And I'm Daniel Che. Thank you for joining us. We start with North Korea firing off dozens of short-range missiles into the East Sea on Sunday. Seoul and Washington view this as another provocation and have urged Pyongyang to halt any further actions that would bring about military tensions. Our defense ministry correspondent Kim Hyun-bin starts us off. South Korea's defense ministry officials say they think North Korea's missile launches on Sunday were carried out in response to annual military drills between Seoul and Washington that are still going on. North Korea fired off 25 missiles at three different times on Sunday. We view this as an armed protest against our joint military exercises with the U.S. North Korea needs to stop its provocations. The U.S. State Department said Sunday that it is well aware of the missile launches and urged North Korea to stop its provocations, which is said are escalating tensions on the Korean Peninsula. Pyongyang did not give any prior notification about the launch. The rockets, which were shot into the East Sea, are believed to have a range of 70 kilometers. They were launched between 6.20 p.m. and 9.32 p.m. Korea time, from a location near Wonsan along the East Coast. Experts say it's not unusual for North Korea to test fire missiles, but it is unprecedented for the regime to fire off so many in one day. Officials in Seoul believe the rockets were Soviet-made surface-to-surface frogs, which lack precision, but are very powerful. The precision is low, but the missiles can carry up to 550 kilograms of explosives. It can also deliver chemical weapons capable of destroying a military core. North Korea has test-fired six Scud missiles along with 11 rockets from multiple rocket launchers in the midst of the annual military exercises, which started late last month and will run through mid-April. Seoul and Washington say the drills are purely defensive, but Pyongyang routinely condemns them as a rehearsal for invasion. Those latest rocket launches came just two days after Pyongyang threatened to demonstrate its nuclear deterrence. The comments seem to be a firm indication North Korea may be preparing for a fourth nuclear test. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Will President Park Geun-hye and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe finally be sitting down for a face-to-face -face talk? Abe's recent decision to honor Japan's landmark apology for wartime sexual enslavement raised hopes, but as Er Chae-sun tells us, Seoul wants sincere actions, not just words, to improve bilateral ties. With speculation rife over President Park Geun-hye meeting her Japanese counterpart at next week's nuclear security summit in the Netherlands, Seoul says there's no reason to oppose a sincere and constructive dialogue with Tokyo. Korean presidential spokesperson Min kyung uk told reporters Monday, what's important is whether any talks can bring out a productive outcome, not having talks for talk's sake. 
The spokesperson said to create an atmosphere for productive discussions, Japan will have to promptly take concrete steps to resolve its colonial era and other historical issues with neighboring nations. On Saturday, President Park welcomed Prime Minister Abe's affirmation the day before that he had no plan to revise a 1993 apology for wartime sexual enslavement by the Japanese military. This, after Abe's chief spokesperson last month said a special team will review victims' testimonies gathered for the apology known as the Kono Statement. Although it was the first time the Korean leader positively assessed Abe's comment on historic issues, the consensus at the presidential office seems to be that Tokyo would first need to prove its sincerity. The Abe cabinet still intends to review how the Kono apology was made and denies there's evidence women were forced to serve as military prostitutes. There, however, is a greater possibility for a three-way dialogue with Washington in The Hague. Ahead of U.S. President Barack Obama's visits to Seoul and Tokyo next month, Washington has reportedly been pressuring both Seoul and Tokyo to improve their strained ties. The United States wants strong trilateral ties with both its Northeast Asian allies to ensure regional stability and cope with potential security threats from China. Che Yusan, Arirang News. And moving on to marathon negotiations between the Korean Medical Association and the government. Talks over the weekend seem to have gone some way toward resolving the dispute over a government plan to adopt a telemedicine system and permit hospitals to launch for-profit subsidiaries. Arirang News Kwon Soo reports. A second doctor's strike following last week's one-day walkout may have been averted with a tentative agreement reached by the Korean Medical Association and the government. The KMA and the Ministry of Health and Welfare have been in unofficial negotiations since last Friday on the government's plans to reform the medical sector. They reached tentative agreement on a number of issues after marathon talks on Sunday that lasted until midnight and made separate announcements about the talks on Monday. The agreement covers four points. The introduction of a telemedicine system that would enable doctors to diagnose and treat patients using remote monitoring and interactive services. The government's plan to let hospitals set up for-profit subsidiaries, reform of the nation's health insurance system, and shorter work hours for medical residents and interns. The KMA and the government agreed to conduct a six-month trial run of the telemedicine system in order to test its safety and effectiveness. The system was a major issue that sparked the Medical Association's day-long strike last week. They also agreed to gradually shorten the working hours of medical residents and interns who work around 100 hours a week, which is 20 hours more than in the U.S. In addition, the KMA and the government are talking about setting up a committee to tackle other issues such as health insurance reform. Members of the Medical Association will now vote on whether to go ahead with a second six-day strike slated to start on March 24th, but with the recent agreement, there is a high chance the strike will be cancelled. The association plans to make a decision on the matter in the next two or three days. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. On to the crisis in Ukraine, and the final results of Sunday's controversial referendum shows that nearly 97 percent of the voters in Crimea want to split from Ukraine and join Russia. However, the U.S. and the European Union are refusing to recognize the results and are pushing for greater sanctions on Russia. Our Connie Lee reports. The final results are in. 96.6 percent of voters in Crimea want to join Russia and split from Ukraine. Moscow said it will accept the result. Crimea's election officials made the announcement Monday morning. But even before the results were final, the preliminary votes released on Sunday had thousands of Crimeans rushing to the streets to celebrate with Russian flags. Fantastic. Of course I support it. It's the correct decision. However, the European Union and the U.S. say the vote was illegal. EU foreign ministers are now set to discuss further sanctions against Russia, such as a visa ban and an asset freeze on Russian officials. The U.S. has rejected the referendum results, with President Barack Obama warning Moscow that Washington is also ready to impose costs over its latest actions in Ukraine. 
In Crimea, opponents of the Russian Union and those loyal to Ukraine boycotted the referendum and denounced the vote as a power play by Moscow. It's unbelievable. Who could imagine something like this? It's worse than Hitler. This Crimean referendum cannot be true. It should be a referendum for all Ukrainians. It's not a referendum. It's a theatrical performance for Russian people where Russia is legalizing the takeover of these territories. The referendum, which came just two weeks after Russian troops took control of the Crimean Peninsula, offered voters the choice of joining Russia or remaining in Ukraine with greater autonomy. Connie Lee, Arirang News. We're all destroyed. Digging deeper, getting to the bottom of stories that impact your life. Talking with you on air and online. Connecting you with experts on the world's most pressing issues. News and current affairs at its best with Moon Gon Yong and Daniel Che on Early Edition at 6. The proposal for talks are holding regular reunions for families separated by the Korean War. Their reason. Officials in Korea will launch a fresh investigation into the data leak that hit three major credit card companies back in January. The new probe will focus on an additional breach that affected 80 percent of the personal information compromised in the first leak. Our Connie Kim reports. Financial regulators will conduct a second special investigation on the three major credit card companies swept up in Korea's largest ever data leak. This follows confirmation of an additional breach late last week. The officials will look into how a secondary leak at KB Kungmin card, NH Nongyap card, and Lotte card was possible. Disciplinary measures already slapped on the firms may be toughened depending on the probe's findings. In response, the Financial Supervisory Service has launched a 24 hour monitoring system to block any further leaks. The financial regulator confirmed last Friday that 83 million out of 104 million pieces of data leaked in January has been passed on to brokers. January's massive breach compromised nearly half of the population's personal information. The top executives of the three companies have resigned and the firms in question were hit with three-month business suspensions in February. There are fears the public's information will be sold on websites like this for as little as 10 cents per sale. Financial authorities say they'll establish new systems so that people reporting illegal data distribution can be rewarded, but the government still has a way to go to convince a skeptical public that it's doing all it can to stop these kinds of leaks. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Moving on to other stories, a recent report indicates that while Japan was suffering through a record trade deficit last year, despite the weakening yen, Korea logged its largest annual trade surplus ever. The Korea Institute for Industrial Economics and Trade said Monday that while Japan posted a record trade deficit of over $110 billion last year, Korea logged a record high annual trade surplus of over $44 billion. The Institute says the competitiveness of major Korean exports such as semiconductors and auto parts contributed to the record surplus despite the unfavorable exchange rate. A boycott of Japanese products in China launched because of disputes over territory and history also played a part. Overseas construction orders secured by Korea's construction companies are expected to reach 72 billion U.S. dollars this year. That will be an all-time high and it comes on the heels of a decision by local construction companies to go at it together and win projects as a unit rather than butting heads with one another trying to win bids. Our Hwang ji has the details. Business is booming for Korean construction contractors in the foreign market. The nation's overseas construction orders have picked up in the first quarter of this year, taking the nation one step closer to a record high in orders. The International Contractors Association of Korea said Monday that construction contracts overseas this year have already topped 16 billion U.S. dollars. That's a nearly 70 percent spike compared to the first quarter of 2013. The association attributes the jump to a decision by local construction companies to build a consortium and win projects together. 
Take Teu Engineering and Construction Corporation, for example. It linked up with four other local construction companies, including GS and SK, and won three large scale projects in Kuwait worth more than $7 billion. Industry sources say that bidding on projects along with other local construction companies has become a trend as a means to avoid cutthroat competition. And with Korea's construction companies expected to win more and more contracts from countries in the Middle East this year, the association forecasts that the nation's overseas construction orders will reach $72 billion by the time the year is up. That would surpass the previous record high of $71 billion posted in 2010. Local construction companies say they plan to employ their team strategy in other foreign markets as well, like Latin America and Africa. Hwang Jie, Arirang News. Korea and China began the 10th round of negotiations on a free trade agreement in Korea earlier this Monday morning. Seoul's trade ministry says the working level talks will continue for five days from Monday through Friday in Ilsa, northwest of Seoul. The two parties will continue to discuss a wide range of issues, including investment regulations and the goods and services to be included in the agreement. The two sides are also expected to discuss intellectual property rights, quarantine regulations and technical barriers to trade. Seoul and Beijing agreed to abolish tariffs on 90 percent of all goods traded between them during previous negotiations. Exports were once the golden ticket for the Korean economy. The country's export volume last year was at an all-time high of around 560 billion U.S. dollars. But the rise in exports has not produced an expected decrease in the unemployment rate here. There were around 1.2 million unemployed people in February, a 19 percent increase from the same period, same month rather, last year. So there is rising speculation that the country's export-driven economy may have reached the limit of its ability to induce growth. And experts say the world's 12th largest economy is being held back by sluggish domestic consumption and soaring household debt. Well, for more on this issue, we have our Kim ji um, connecting with us live from the News Center. ji so is it fair to say that exports are no longer an engine of growth for this country? Well, statistics are giving some weight to the perspective that the export-driven economy is not the way to go for a, tri a trickle-down effect in the distribution of wealth. According to data by the Bank of Korea, the number of employed people in the country has decreased gradually over the years despite a surge in exports. For every increase in exports worth 1 billion Korean won, or $933,000 in 2011, less than six people found new jobs. That's a sharp reduction from 1995, when more than 20 people found new jobs for every increase in exports of the same amount. In addition, Korea is soaring household debt amounting to more than a quadrillion Korean won, or roughly 939 billion U.S. dollars, is seen as a major risk to the Korean economy, as it's already hurting domestic consumption. Now, I know people are working overtime to find out some ways to solve this problem. What are some of the ways that we've come up with so far to try and boost the job numbers and the domestic demand? Well, many suggest lifting heavy regulations on the service sector, which has the highest number of regulations. It has 3,600 3, regulations on the service sector, which takes up 47 percent of all business regulations. And take, for example, a bill that's currently under consideration in the Health and Welfare Committee. It's a bill that would make certain parts of the face and body off limits for plastic surgery based on the patient's age. Doctors who violate the regulation could face up to two years behind bars. But officials in the aesthetic industry say regulations like this are unnecessary and that they harm Korea's competitiveness in the field of aesthetic surgery. There is a growing demand for aesthetic surgery in Korea and from abroad. But investors are getting increasingly more reluctant to invest in R&D to related technologies due to regulations on the industry. This will in the longer term would affect the country's competitiveness in the field. 
Korea is one of the largest medical tourism destination in the world, with the high popularity of Korean TV dramas and K-pop a driving factor. And it says around 150,000 foreigners visited Korea for medical purposes in the year 2012 alone. Well, GN, deregulation has been the key word in President Park Geun-hye's uh, policy goals in terms of the economy, so we can look forward to that. But what are some of the other ways to boost domestic consumption? Well, Konyang, one of the best ways to increase domestic consumption has a lot to do with increasing the country's population. I mean, if there are more people, there will be a larger market with a higher demand for goods and services. You can see that in the case of China, which has a population of more than 1.3 billion people. But the Korean population, which is just over 50 million, is gradually shrinking due to a low birth rate coupled with an aging population. So experts here are suggesting other ways to boost domestic consumption. And that is one idea is establishing a K-zone, a free economic zone that would make it easier for Koreans and foreigners to do business. And this K-zone would cover an area within a 2,000 kilometer radius or a three-hour flying distance from a designated area, such as in this case, the Incheon International Airport. And it would likely include some parts of China, Japan, Mongolia, and Taiwan. And then it would extend to around 1.5 billion people. And I met with Professor Shim Gyeon from the Department of Real Estate Studies at Kongo University. And he says once the K zone is established, it would change business practices in Korea, and goods and services would be more localized to the tastes of foreign customers. The K-Zone is not just a tourist site, it's a business and financial hub that would induce global companies and international organizations to put their headquarters in Korea. The expert added, the government, the expert added that the government needs to ease visa restrictions for residents in the K-Zone so foreigners could come and go easily. The one thing we have plenty of here in Korea is ideas. Hopefully we'll have good follow-through with that as well. Thank you, Jiyeon, so much for that report. That was our Kim Jiyeon on what's being done in Korea to boost domestic consumption. While speaking of ideas to realize its vision for a creative economy, the Korean government is putting its money where its mouth is. Some 60 billion won, roughly 56 million U.S. dollars, will be injected into what's being called a creative economy vitamin project this year. It aims at realizing sustainable growth and cultivating new business sectors by integrating information technology with existing industries. The Science and ICT Ministry says a total of 23 assignments have been finalized and one includes utilizing data from agricultural damage caused by natural disasters to develop a forecasting system to better prepare for similar situations in the future. Now, Others include providing the public with better information on fine dust pollution levels and upgrading and networking tourist information to better serve foreigners visiting Korea. Many people in Korea let out a sigh of relief as we had reports of a false alarm. Authorities in the capital were sent scrambling on Monday afternoon after a suspected bomb was found abandoned on a subway station platform. Reports of a suspicious black bag at Gangnam-gu office station came in at around 2 p.m. Korea time. The building was evacuated and the explosive ordnance disposal team called in. But upon closer inspection, they found that the bag was filled with clothes and hangers and it was not a real threat. Subway operations through the station resumed just before 5 p.m. One thing Koreans excel at is hitting the books and staying in libraries. More accolades for Korea's top-ranked university in its World University Rankings list released Monday. The British magazine Times Higher Education placed Seoul National University in 44th place. Now that's 15 spots higher than last year. The British magazine ranks universities each year based on a number of factors, including teaching conditions, research and citations. Six other Korean institutions made the cut, including the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology and the Pohang University of Science and Technology, which ranked 56th and 60th respectively. The California Institute of Technology came in at number one on the list, followed by Harvard and Oxford University, which tied for second.
Well, our Monday here in the nation's capital began with warm spring-like temperatures, but things have taken a turn. Let's now go to our Michelle Park for the uh, more details on the weather. Michelle. Good evening, Kanyang and Daniel. Like you said, things started out nicely, but the rain clouds are kind of moving in. Oh, okay. So do the spring showers mean it's about to get cold again, Michelle? Well, the temperatures are likely uh, going to drop a few degrees, meaning it will feel much cooler than today, where highs in some places will rise up to 22 degrees. Now, most of the rain will continue throughout tonight and end after midnight, making a way for a cloudy day nationwide tomorrow. Now, going over to our readings, so we'll start off the morning at 8 degrees and gets up to 15 in the afternoon. Meanwhile, the southern cities such as Daegu and Busan will get up to 22 and 19. Degrees. Now moving over to other regions, Jeju Island can hit up to 18 degrees. Dokdo makes it up to 14, while Nankumgang tops out at 6. Well, that's all for tonight. I'm Michelle Park and have a wonderful evening. Thank you for that, Michelle. And that wraps up the news for this hour. Thank you for watching. This has been Daniel Che. And I'm Moon Gan Young. Thank you as always for being here with us. Have a wonderful rest of the evening and we'll see you right back here same time tomorrow evening. Good night. Thank you.